Okay. Now the three questions. What do you think they would be? The three most important questions, almost unanimously, the first question was, who wrote the Bible? The first question deals with the authenticity of God's Word. And I think that rightfully should be so. Because you see that our faith is based on the Bible. Our faith is based on the words of the Scripture. The Scripture being the most important thing that holds and binds our faith. There are some in the Christian faith that, that they get good feelings. They have the Spirit of God working in their life and they feel like this is, this is their hold to God. But our faith is built on the Word of God. And if the Word of God is not yea and amen, and if it's not true, then where is our faith? On what is our faith? Would you base your faith on your feelings? You may feel that there is a God in heaven. And one man feels that no, God is in the ocean. So we have to look to some reference point and say, where is God? Who is God? And that gets us down to the Bible. So my first question that was uh, proposed to me was who wrote the Bible and I'd like to have you turn to me turn with me please to uh, second uh, Timothy in chapter 3 and verse uh, 16 and I would like to start here <coughs> explaining this and before we do though I, I am going to give you the three questions okay first question was who wrote the Bible the second question was, where is God? And the third question is, very easy question for us, but third question was, has anyone ever come back from the dead? Really? Think about it. Just who wrote the Bible? Another part of that question might be, did God write the Bible? I read not long ago that some scholars were uh, getting together and talking about the writings of the Scripture, and they said that they definitely believe that Jesus never penned anything from the Bible. Jesus never wrote one word that's written in the Bible. I have a tendency to agree with them. Then who wrote the Bible? How in the world can we place credence on this scripture? We allow our lives to depend upon the writings of this word. We fashion our, our, our system of government. We fashion our, our way of living after the writings of this word this great nation was, some people will debate and argue it, but this great nation was based on some of the teachings that we find in the Word of God. The great laws that govern humanity are found in the Word of God. It is the Word of God that is the basis and complete teaching for a guide for human life. And yet, if we cannot find credits in the writings of this word, why should we follow it? That's a good question to me. And as it was posed to me, I take it serious when somebody says to me, who wrote the Bible? Second Timothy in chapter 3 and verse 16 it says all scripture is given by the inspiration of God 
I want to stop right there. All scripture is get, given by the inspiration of God. It doesn't say that it is written by God, but under his divine inspiration, men wrote the words. Do you understand that? Men were inspired and they wrote. Let's go to 2 Peter in the New Testament. 2 Peter chapter 1 and verse 21 says, For the prophecy came not in old times by the will of man, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. Now listen to this. The Bible says that God did not write the Bible. The Bible says that men wrote the Bible inspired by God. Do you understand that? They were moved by the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost caused them to write. All right, let's look at Acts chapter 1. Go back to the book of Acts, verse 16. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs be fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, which was guide to them that took Jesus. Now, I want to say this, that this particular scripture is giving reference it says by the mouth of David it says and what is the writings of David and who knows what the writings of David are what are the writings of David um, the, psalms. the Psalms the Psalms are the writings of David look what it says it says by the mouth of David it says the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake so in other words what the scripture is teaching us is that the Holy Ghost speaking through David David writing these words to us God using men to bring his word to men I heard an, a story one time about and I, I've relayed this story before, but I have to say that about this man that had a, a, a wife who was a believer, and this man was not a believer, didn't believe the Bible. He said the Bible was full of contradictions and writings that no man could understand anyway. His wife was a believer, and she would go to the meeting, and he stayed home. He'd say, go, you go to the meeting if you want to. You want to listen to those things, you go ahead. He says it doesn't make any sense anyway. And he sat home reading his paper one night after his wife had gone to a Bible study and it was storming out and all of a sudden he looks over to his window and here are a noise and he goes to the window and hears some birds that are bouncing against his window. And he looks out at them and it was really storming. It was cold outside and the birds looked like they would fly right up to the window and try to fly right into the window. He thought for a moment, he says, why those foolish birds, they don't even know what a glass is. They think that because they see the light here, that they can fly right into this home here and get the protection of this home. How stupid. He went back to reading his paper and the birds kept trying to fly into his window and he went back and he saw them out there on the ground and they were freezing and huddled together and every once in a while one of them would jump up and try to jump into the window well this ungodly man was struck with compassion he puts his coat on he goes outside and runs over to his barn and he opens the doors of his barn puts a light out in front of the barn then he goes and tries to work the birds into the barn but the birds became frightened and they ran they flew here and there and scurried here and there and he's out in the freezing cold and he's 
trying to gather them into the barn and finally he said he gets frustrated and he says why these foolish birds he says don't they know that I've got protection over here for them and they don't know enough to come into the barn and he would try again and again and again to get the birds to go into the barn they wouldn't go and he stood in front of the barn doors looking over at the foolish birds and the thought come to his mind they don't understand me he says you know he says if I could make myself into a bird and go down there and talk to them and speak their language I would say to them come into the barn and they would follow me into the barn he shut the barn doors he walked back to his house just shaking his head thinking about those things after he got back in the house he began to understand what the scriptures were you see that God came the Bible says that he, came, he became flesh and dwelt amongst men it was necessary for God to present his word to us in a way that we could understand it do you know that the Bible says that his ways are higher than our ways that it is impossible for man to reach that level to where God is to be able to understand God you and I just came along in the score of this universe we've only been here a short time say well I'm 50 years old I'm 60 years old do you know that this earth is billions of years old do you know that God is older than the earth and the universe <laughs> do you know that God cannot be aged the Bible says that he is the alpha and the omega he is the beginning and the end and mankind little mankind thinks to reason with God they think that they can understand oh, I can understand him if he just came and speak to me uh, uh, you know I, I'll know what he's talking about you haven't been around long enough you don't know what's going on you don't know half of the creation you don't even know the fingernail on the fingernail a little chip on the end of the fingernail you don't know nothing and so God in his wisdom inspires men who flavor the word with humanity to make man understand God otherwise how could you understand the things of God the greatest and wisest scientist in the world is foolishness with God We have scripture in the Old and New Testament where God orders men to write. Did you know in the Old Testament that God ordered Jeremiah to write the things that he said, write them in a book? <clears throat> Jeremiah was a secretary. He was taking dictation. He was a young man of God and he loved the Lord and the Lord said get a scroll and write what I tell you to write and he wrote it Ezekiel was a man of God and he loved the Lord and the Bible says that God told Ezekiel he said take a book and write the things that I tell you to write John the Revelator in the book of Revelation put away on an island I wonder if they thought that they could keep him out of society hold him back a little bit and he'll never be able to bring that message of the way to other people well he went back on that island by himself and God came to him and said write the things that I tell you write the things that I show you 
I wonder if John thought, well, I'm here all alone. I write these things. What's going to happen? John probably never figured that generation after generation would read his word. Many people would, may not understand it, but we're living in an age right now, we're living at the end of the age where the revelator's words are beginning to come to life. We're beginning to see the things that God had predicted actually coming to take place in our life right now. And who in the world could do such a thing except God be with him? I had a fellow tell me not long ago, he says, you believe in dinosaurs. You want to get me into the believing mode. <laughs> I said, well, uh, I, I cannot refuse or deny the fact that there are dinosaurs. He says, there, I got gotcha. you, he says. There, I got gotcha. you, he says. What are you going to do with those big bones? He says, you can't write them off they're there, them dinosaur bones are there. This old world's been around a long time, a lot longer than 6,000 years, he said to me. <clears throat> you know what I said to him? I'm going to tell you. I said, so therefore, because you see the dinosaur bones, you believe in dinosaurs. He said, yes. I says, wait a minute, you never saw a dinosaur, and yet because you see the bones, you say you believe in dinosaurs. Absolutely. I says that you are a potential believer because the Bible prophesies and it comes to pass. How can you deny the word of God? Do you see what I'm saying? If these are just words, and we just are repeating these words and these are just verbiage so to speak we all better go home we'll get in our Etzel and we'll go to Syracuse but these words are life the things that have been inspired here have come to pass and who could predict what man could predict accurately time after time year after year hundreds and hundreds of years in advance the things that would happen in this life you know that 3500 years ago a man predicted that Israel would become a nation in the last days and another prophet prophesied and said that yes there will be a nation and it will be surrounded by enemy armies. Two predictions. Literally coming to pass. All of these prophecies, and there are hundreds of prophecies concerning latter times and latter days. Who wrote them? I believe... To answer that question, I have to say, who wrote the Bible? I believe God had a hand in it. I believe that it was not just written by carnal flesh. I believe that that inspiration is so powerful in the Word of God that you can't read two words in God's Word without getting something happening to you if you mean business with God. The second question I don't know if we're going to get into the third one maybe, but we'll see how time goes by. It says, where is God? Where is God? And if there is a God, why can't I see him? This is the mentality. This is not a fresh mentality. This is a human mentality. <clears throat> Centuries ago, men set up idols to worship the reason that they set an idol up was that, that they, it was something that they could see with their eyes you see man wants to worship something he can see man wants something that he can 
put his hand on and say, yeah, there it is right there. And so he would set up these idols. And they had all, an idol in every city. They had idols in the homes. And they worshipped these idols. It's no different today. Men still worship idols. They have different names for them. Some call them automobiles. Some call them homes. Some call them jobs. Some call them husbands. Some call them wives. Some call them neighborhoods. Some call them their dogs. But they are still idols. And they still worship those things. They have placed those things on a level where it is in such a place where it, it, it has a high reverence for them. Something they adore. Colossians, turn with me to Colossians, please. In Colossians, starting there, it says, Who is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of every creature? Here we have a description, a simple description of God. It says the invisible God. To me, invisible means not able to see with my carnal eye. Okay? An invisible God. 1 Timothy. Flip over to 1 Timothy. Chapter 1 here in verse 17. <clears throat> the Apostle Paul writing to Timothy says, Now unto the king eternal immortal, invisible, the only wise God, be honor and glory forever and ever. Amen. Invisible. First John, turn with me please to First John. That's in the back of the book now. In verse 12 it says, No man hath seen God at any time. If we love one another, God dwells in us and his love is perfected in us. Although God is invisible and although the Bible says that no man has seen God, the Bible says that if we love one another, not even if we just love God. Do you know that if you say you love God, and you don't love your neighbor, that you don't love God? You're a liar, and the truth is not in you. So here, John hits it right on the head, so to speak, and he comes right to the point, and he says, no man has seen God, but if you love one another. Now look at this. And this is another whole sermon. I'm not even on that sermon. I'm on, where is God? <laughs> it says that God dwells in us you want to know where God is the Bible says that God sits on a throne in heaven the Bible says that heaven is his throne the Bible says in another place it says that God sits on the circle of the earth in Isaiah God is omnipresent able to be in more than one place at the same time. But how close is God? He's in your heart if you love one another. Right back at you. Where is God? Is he in your heart? If he's not in your heart, shame on you. He's not in your heart because you don't love. Because you have no love in your life. When someone asks you, where is God? Answer back to them. Where is God in your life? He should be in your heart. Although you cannot see him, I have to say this, he can see you. <laughs> he knows you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. I'm not talking about Santa Claus. I'm talking about Jesus. Thank you. Praise God. 
He knows where you are. You can't go into your closet and shut the door and shut the light and say, at last I'm alone. You're not because God is there. You're not invisible. That belongs to Him. He's invisible. But He sees you. Do you know that God can see you right now? And God sees you as I cannot see you. He knows your heart. He knows everything about you. He knows how much toothpaste you put on your toothbrush this morning when you brushed your teeth. He knows how much Vaseline you put in your hair this morning. Ask a question. <clears throat> what will be your fate on that day? What type of an account will you give before God? I wonder on that day if some of us might say, well, I wasn't sure who wrote the Bible. I didn't really, really want to take it. I didn't want to take that word because I wasn't sure who wrote it. And perhaps some will say or think in their mind, well, I wasn't sure if there was a God. I didn't know where God was. I never saw him. If you're listening to my voice this morning, unless you love your neighbor, you will never see God. You are not going to make it. You're not going to make it. <clears throat> now that's a negative note, but I want to finish on a positive note. Love your neighbor. Jesus was asked, what are the two great commandments? Jesus asked uh, a young man one time what the two commandments were, and the young man said, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and love thy neighbor as thyself. Jesus said, you aren't too far from the kingdom of God. Well, praise the Lord. Time has gone right by. And we hope that what you have seen and heard has touched your heart. If you do not know Jesus as your Savior, you can do it right now. Remember that Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And no man comes to the Father except by me.